This past week has probably been Danny Ainge's most scrutinized period of time as the Boston Celtics general manager, I think. On that ESPN trade deadline special a week ago, Woj said that other front offices are wary to trust the Celtics when talking trades because they'll do a pump fake and will not go through with it. Danny Ainge trying to put out a competitive team while keeping assets for the future in the past has come back to hurt the team in the present. I think we're pretty close to the Celtics making some type of significant change by the summer. I thought why not go through the history of Danny Ainge's almost trades for stars and some of the actual problems with the Celtics getting over the hump the past few seasons. One of the first players the Celtics were after when they built up a chest of draft picks was Jimmy Butler. The Chicago Bulls weren't interested in paying Jimmy long term and the goal for the Celtics back around the 2016 draft was to take the leap after their 48 win season and pairing Isaiah Thomas with Jimmy was going to be the start of that. Days before the 2016 draft, one of the trades Boston was interested in doing was sending Jay Crowder and their number 3 and number 16 picks in the first round that year for Jimmy Butler, but something Danny Ainge has been criticized for repeatedly in the present and the past was brought up by the Bulls. A source close to the Bulls said that the Celtics have a reputation of trying to win trades and kept changing terms of the Butler trade so they did not go through with it. When Jimmy was eventually traded to Minnesota the next season, the Celtics tried again but it was never serious because of the offers but they did get Kyrie Irving. Funny enough, back in September 2017, Ainge went on a Boston radio show and basically said that Minnesota gave up too much for Jimmy Butler. Also around the time of the Jimmy Butler trade stuff, the Celtics were looking to get Paul George. The Paul George era in Indiana was done after they lost to the Cavs in the first round. There were two times the Celtics tried getting Paul George. The first time was at the 2017 trade deadline. The Celtics wanted to add another star next to Isaiah Thomas for the playoff run and said okay, even though PG is going to be a free agent in 2018, we can make our case with two playoff runs and hopefully he resigns long term, but no deal happened then and the trade talks between them started up again at the 2017 draft. The trade was apparently Jay Crowder, another starter, and three first round picks. But then a week later, Woj says that the Celtics never made a real offer for George. I believe the Woj report though, since we know the history now, but that's the thing I don't like about these source leaks. You never know whether it's a team or it's an agent leaking this stuff to the media. The closest the Celtics got to getting one of these more recent stars was probably Anthony Davis. There wasn't much pump faking here. We know the Celtics had been monitoring the Anthony Davis situation in New Orleans for years. Basically every offseason five years ago, you got some new unnamed report that the Celtics were building up their draft pick chest to go after Davis and pair him with another star. The Celtics knew when it was closer for AD's time to hit free agency, they'd have one of the more stronger trade packages once it was clear he wanted out. They seemed like the obvious front runners. But that front runner title immediately went away when Anthony Davis' dad went on ESPN to confirm a report on the record that he doesn't want his son on the Celtics. But that did not stop Danny Ainge though. It was reported that the Celtics did put Jason Tatum and picks in the deal, but in the summer when he got traded, he didn't want to include Tatum because Kyrie was pretty much gone at that point. Honestly, the Celtics had a plan here that just flipped on them. They had the assets, they had the star to pair with him, but Anthony Davis made it about clear as day. He didn't want to be there and Kyrie leaving made it pointless to have AD just by himself in Boston. Kawhi Leonard was talked about as someone the Boston Celtics should trade for back in the summer of 2018. They were one of the teams with the Lakers debating on what assets to put in for the trade. Kawhi's situation with San Antonio was honestly a glitch in the NBA system because of weird injury concerns and him not really communicating what was happening. Getting a guy that good at his age in a trade is ridiculously rare, so it makes sense to check it out. As we mentioned, we know the Celtics had the assets, they had the proven young guys, future picks and contract matching guys, but they were hesitant because every report coming out of Kawhi's circle of people was he wants to be in LA. It makes sense to hold off on that, there's no guarantee you win the title that year and now you have no Kawhi and possibly no Jalen Brown or Jason Tatum. According to Woj, he said the Celtics were trying to do a trade with the Spurs that involved draft picks rather than a lot of young players they had and that makes sense, you don't want to be Kawhi and just a bunch of role players but the Spurs wanted one of Tatum or Brown which makes sense, they want a proven young guy. I don't blame the Celtics for being hesitant here, Kawhi was going to leave if the Celtics got him. James Harden was traded to the Brooklyn Nets, but sometime after that deal happened, it came out that the Celtics were also in on those trade talks. The Celtics at this point have pump faked on so many trades, so when I saw that the Celtics were in those conversations about Harden, I just laughed. It was reported that Ainge's interest in Harden was higher than what people thought. I mean, I'm sure it was. Look at how good Harden is playing right now. You should have high interest in him. The price to get him was apparently Jalen Brown, Marcus Smart, and a bunch of picks. It was reported that the Celtics did not want to get rid of Jalen Brown. 
They were clearly happy with how the conference finals run went and wanted to run it back with Jalen, Jason, Kemba, and support pieces. I mean, running it back with Jalen and Jason, that's not too bad of a deal, but Harden and Tatum would have had the Celtics as a top three seed right now, rather than a play-in tournament team. Again, I'm not against keeping Jalen Brown, like you have a pretty good duo, under 25 guys, but the Celtics have never really had an elite offense under Brad Stevens, besides the one year with Isaiah Thomas going crazy, Harden would have made their offense elite. To be fair, of course, it looked like Harden was more focused on either Miami, Philly, or Brooklyn. So we're more familiar with the ones that happened recently, but what about one when Danny Ainge was just starting out as a GM? I thought I'd include this one for fun since it's actually pretty interesting. Chris Paul wasn't a star back in 2005, but in the draft that year, he was considered by pretty much everyone, someone who could eventually become one. Danny Ainge said on a podcast back in 2013 that a trade would have sent Paul Pierce to New Orleans for the draft rights to Chris Paul. Paul Pierce back then was pretty sick of the situation in Boston. They were losing and he was openly complaining about the situation. Everyone knew that the Celtics were shopping Pierce at the time, but they decided to keep him. It's a pretty interesting what if because they won the title with the big three in 2008, but if they have Chris Paul and go a bit younger and get some other pieces, they could have built a contender with CP3. Those were the trades that didn't happen, but remember the Celtics did trade for a star in his prime a few years ago. He made the Kyrie trade so it would set up the Celtics to getting Anthony Davis or another star player with Kyrie and Gordon Hayward. Gordon wasn't a trade, it was through free agency, but they got him. It's not like Danny hasn't made trades for stars before, that's just how things work now. You gotta make sure your stars are happy, or in two to three years they might ask out, even if it's a decent situation. I mean, in another world you have a three-man team of Kyrie, Hayward, and Anthony Davis. Obviously I'm not in the Celtics front office, but I'm sure getting those three guys was one of the plans that they had. That's not like an overwhelmingly dominant trio like the Nets, but it's an NBA Finals core. There were three problems in the past five or six years with Danny Ainge. With LeBron going to the finals every year, Ainge admitted that he was hesitant to make trades at the deadline to get over the hump because they were just going to lose to LeBron in the playoffs anyway, so you might as well throw out a competitive team while keeping those draft picks. I think the second problem is, is that it's too difficult to balance winning and competing for the future. Those Memphis and Sacramento picks that ended up flopping and not turning into great picks screwed them. These should have been traded earlier. That balance of winning and competing for the future is too difficult, you have to lean one way. I get it's not popular to defend Danny Ainge's GM record, but he always get a pass for this. Bringing Markel Fultz in for a workout, then he trades that pick back to number 3 to get Jason Tatum instead. That was not a sure thing at the time, there was no one I read or listened to that was like, you know what the Celtics should do, they should trade back and get Tatum instead of drafting Markel Fultz. Also getting Jalen Brown the number 3 pick when it was considered a reach has turned out pretty good for them. He's hit on stuff that other GMs just haven't. Now has he been perfect? No, obviously. Hindsight tells us that the Celtics should have done something to the roster after going 7 games with the Cavs in the 2018 Conference Finals. I think this is the season where Danny Ainge should get more criticism than normal. My biggest problem with Ainge has always been around getting some offense. This is the offseason where the Celtics have to make wholesale changes or I won't be slightly defending him anymore. I understand being hesitant about going all in for Paul George or Jimmy Butler, neither of them are top 5 guys, but then if the news is true about not wanting James Harden because you have to give up Jalen and Marcus, then what are we doing here? But you also gotta remember that the Celtics ownership isn't trying to pay a luxury tax bill, so that limits it a little bit. That's one of the bigger stories to me. That was one of the more under talked about stories at the deadline. They traded Daniel Tice so they didn't have to pay their luxury tax in the middle of the year. I'm just looking at it from a neutral fan's perspective. The Ainge situation is more complicated than some people say. I've seen Celtics fans really tear into Danny Ainge, so I'm sure you might have a different opinion than me on this. And that is it for me. Let me know how you're feeling about Danny Ainge in the comments as a GM. And if you did enjoy the video, make sure to leave a like as it does help the channel do better. And consider subscribing if you want to see more from me.